Hey everybody, I am Dylan Estes. I'm a content creator here at Plaid and I'm joined in the studio today with Tanisha Jones. Hello everybody. So we are going to be doing a uh, great little YouTube live. We haven't been on YouTube in a minute, uh, YouTube or Facebook, um, to talk about Drizzle. Uh, if you'll remember, Drizzle launched back in the spring, the late spring, and Folk Art Drizzle is a complete fluid art painting program. So we have a bunch of different paint colors, a lot of different tools, we have paint sets, um, we have everything you need to get into paint pouring. And today we're going to be talking about a really popular subject, which is cell formation using silicone oil. So that is a huge thing in the pouring community. Um, so as we get started here, let us know if you have any questions. Tanisha is in the studio and she's gonna be relaying the questions to me. Um, so let us know if you have any questions about silicone oil or cell formation. Um, and I'm going to preface this with there are a lot of different techniques um, with fluid art in general, but specifically for cell formation. So um, I know we may have people that have different levels of experience with fluid art and cells, and there are just a lot of different ways to do it. So if you have different ways than what I'm teaching today, that's awesome. Leave them in the comments. We'd love to know different ways to use silicone oil. Um, but I'm going to be showing you one of the ways that I know that I can kind of reliably get um, cells with Folk Art Drizzle. So um, one thing to know is that Folk Art Drizzle is pre-mixed. And a lot of times with pouring paint, you have to mix your paint color with a medium that thins your paint down and gives you that really nice fluidity. But since Folk Art Drizzle is pre-mixed, we don't have to do any of that. And a lot of times people think cell formation is just a technique that you do with the paint. But you actually need an additional product, which is silicone oil. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a clear oil um, that you use to create cells. You mix it into your paint. So there is a little bit of mixing involved if you want to do cell formation. Um, you can get silicone oil all over the internet. You can get it at your local craft stores. Anywhere in that paint pouring section, there's a lot of different fluid art sections basically at every craft store now. So you can find this just about everywhere, but we're just using basic silicone oil um, that you can get all over the place. So I just grabbed that. It's very inexpensive um, and you get a lot usually for a pretty uh, low amount. So we're going to talk about cells in general and then I'm gonna show you a few different techniques to get the cells. Um, and I wanna highlight this if you wanna go overhead. If you are unfamiliar with cells, these are cells. So this is a paint pour that we've done and we've mixed some silicone into our paint and we get these beautiful um, formations here where the two different colors or three different colors are actually separating and that's what forms all of that patterning. So we're gonna show you how to do that today. This I did, this project was done with our flower cup. Um, so you can do it with, in tandem with, a lot of our different tools. One of the tool sets that we're going to be highlighting today is our Drop Swipe Stir Toolkit. And this is available at Michael's. So um, if I haven't mentioned it already, Folk Art Drizzle is exclusive at Michael's. So if you go to your Michael's, uh, local Michael's Arts and Crafts store or go to michaels.com, you can find the complete Drizzle line. It's on um, shelves now. So I encourage you to go see all the beautiful colors. We have our original formula. We have several different metallics, iridescence, glitters. There's a lot um, to look through there. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. And um, I guess I showed you one um, example of cells. I'm gonna show you a few more right before I start here. And we're gonna kind of go through a few different samples in the order that we're gonna kind of craft with them. So if you wanna go overhead again, um, this is a swipe pour that we've done where you get some cells. And we're gonna be going over this technique. So I just kind of wanna like, uh, preview them for you. And then we've also got this metallic dirty pour so again, you see all those giant cells. And I, I want to uh, give another disclaimer that your projects and my project today may not look exactly like this. That's the beauty of fluid art, that it's different every time you do it. So there's so many different um, techniques and looks that you get with fluid art, and that's the fun of it. You kind of don't know what to expect. You just learn how to kind of move things in a certain direction to get your desired effect. So I'll show you a few more here. So Dylan, we have an interesting comment. Okay. Um, we have uh, Heidi who says, we called that spin art in the 70s. Record turntables worked the best due to varying speeds. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's the great thing about Drizzle that you can do a lot of different art forms with it. So you can absolutely do spin art with Drizzle. It is thin enough. 
Um, if you have one of those old little spin art um, makers, one of those little wheels, or like um, Tanisha said, you could definitely use a turntable. It's really fun. So today we're going to be kind of highlighting the pouring aspect, not so much the splattering or the spinning, but Folk Art Drizzle is great for that. So I'm glad you kind of connected with that. And we do sell our own spinner oh, as yeah. well. Yeah, I forgot to show you. Let me show you that. Um, so we have a great spinner here. This is a great turntable that I use for a lot of my different projects to just have as a workstation. It's nice to have your canvas so that you can spin it, um, but you can also spin it and twirl it. Let me show on the overhead here some of the techniques. Um, you can see one of the awesome canvases I made there. But then you can pour your paint on, give it a spin, and then you get a great splatter paint look. So this is great if you want to use it as a specific spin art technique or you can just use it as a workstation. So that's a great point, I forgot about that. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start, and I'm gonna show you, uh, as I always do, just the basics of pouring. If you're new to pouring, there are a few things that we like to have on hand, and one of them is push pins. Um, so these are great to have because we like to elevate our canvases off of our baking sheets. And as you can see, I'm pouring on a uh, reusable baking pan. This is one of those really nice uh, hard aluminum pans with a great non-stick coating on it. So we're going to be using this to pour onto and the great thing about this is that when your paint pours into the bottom of the pan it stays and dries and then you can remove it very easily. There's no problem uh, sticking on here. You can definitely pour on a drop cloth or you can see I've got a piece of palette paper or a piece of poster board under here too just to keep my area clean, but we love to pour on these baking sheets. A few more things, I've got some cups. Um, these are just regular plastic drinking cups, but you can also use silicone cups. I use those a lot for pouring, um, just for speed. I'm gonna use these little plastic guys. And some popsicle sticks or tongue depressors to help mix. Um, like I said, flu um, Folk Art Drizzle is, there's no mixing involved if you're just pouring it right out of the bottle but we are adding our silicone oil into it, so we're gonna be mixing just a little bit, so you wanna have a few extra containers um, to mix into. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is show you how we put some push pins in our canvas to keep it elevated, and I'm using this great little heart-shaped canvas. You can find all kinds of different shaped canvases online nowadays. Um, we're gonna be using another one that's a hexagon shape, and a little rectangle. So you can really pour on anything you want. Coming up in the next little bit and on um, Michael's community classroom, we're actually gonna be pouring on some 3D objects and upcycling some different craft projects. So don't think just flat. You can always pour on terracotta pots and all kinds of things that you can put outside because drizzle is indoor, outdoor, and multi-surface. So you're able to pour on a lot of different um, substrates. So this is just a little heart-shaped canvas we have here. And I'm gonna do a dirty pour. And to get started, I'm going to mix my colors. I'm just gonna separate them out. Again, if you have, guys have any questions, please ask them in the comments, um, and Tanisha will relay them to me. So I'm just gonna separate my colors here. And while you're doing that, um, no questions, but we do have a couple comments. We have P. Shadwick, who says hello from Washington, D.C. Awesome. And we have uh, Christine who says, hello from Louisiana. I love paint pouring. Oh, awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys are with us today. Thanks for joining. We love to hear where people are watching from. Yeah. And again, Folk Art Drizzle is exclusive at Michael's. So uh, if you have a Michael's Arts and Crafts store near you, go check these out. We have a great end cap um, with a bunch of these paint colors and all the tools. But like I said, you can also purchase all of the drizzle line on michaels.com if you don't live near michaels or it's just a lot easier sometimes to just shop online. Although the end cap is fun to go and see in person. Yes. You'll see Dylan's face up there. Yeah. Which was very exciting the first time I saw it. Yep. I like to say that during every live we have. <laughs> it's super cool. Yeah, Tanisha was one of the first ones to go to the store with her uh, daughters and see the end cap. So we really we really loved that. Okay, so now that I've got all my colors uh, separated into cups, I'm going to grab my oil, and they just come in a little squeeze bottle just like this with a little twist off cap. And I'm going to put a few drops in each color. Now this is a big uh, point of contention for a lot of uh, fluid artists and pouring people. So you don't 
have to go with this ratio. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Sometimes people will mix silicone in one or two of the colors and leave the other color uh, alone. So that's all up to you. I encourage you guys to experiment. The reality is you get a cool effect either way. So um, I'm sure there's ways to control your cells differently over time. And I would say I'm an intermediate level of cell knowledge. I've done a lot of paint pours, um, a lot of these on the table, and I've been pretty successful. So just keep that in mind um, as we're teaching you. I know I don't know everything, and I know there's a lot of different techniques out there. But you can see the ratio of paint to silicone is really, really small. So you don't need much silicone at all in your paint. It's mostly paint and just like I said, a few drops of that silicone oil. Now this is really important to make sure that you're mixing your colors incredibly thoroughly. When you're doing cell formation, it's really key to make sure that those colors are mixed because you want that silicone to be completely incorporated into your drizzle paint. We have another hello from Tarita watching from Oregon. Oh, awesome. Welcome, Tarita. We are on Facebook and YouTube today, so um, we love seeing your, uh, everybody's questions. So please let us know if you have any specific questions. And we're going to be doing three different pours. And if you guys have any other ideas of techniques that you'd like to see or paint color combinations, we're going to be planning a few more uh, drizzle lives this week and into the summer. So we would love to cater something directly to you. So if there's something you want to see, we're happy to make that happen. And we've been trying for a while now to get outside to do a really big pour. Yes. And now that it's about 100 degrees here in Atlanta, we're probably going to put it off for another week. <laughs> right. So. TBD, but we will yes. be going outside. That's the great thing about Folk Art Drizzle. If you saw our launch week, you can go to our Instagram profile and see all of the cool videos that Tanisha and I did, and it kind of all culminated with a giant canvas at the end. Um, so check our story highlights for that. It was a really, really fun week. You can do so many projects, and since the bottles are so big with Folk Art Drizzle, you can really do a lot of large projects. And I know these are, you know, this is a you're definitely adding to your collection if you get these. You're making a commitment because these are not, uh, you know, value paints. These are for that professional, um, a really serious, fluid artist. So we've really catered that to you and give you a really good outcome for the product. Okay, so now we're going to do what is referred to as a dirty pour. So we're going to pour all of these colors in different orders into our cup and in into an empty cup. And we're going to create a layer of paint, a big uh, group of layers of paint. And then we're going to pour it onto our canvas. And we're going to need a torch. So this is a butane torch, um, small little butane guy. You can get these at the grocery store, at your local craft store. These are really popular now with resin crafts and fluid art. And that's what's going to help our cells appear. So some may appear naturally just by the liquids touching each other and kind of separating. But we're going to use that to accentuate our pour. So I'm going to just start pouring a little bit of each color at a time. Now you can do this technique with just drizzle alone and do a dirty pour right out of the bottle into a cup. So don't think that you have to do this technique with a um, silicone oil. You can do this a normal dirty pour without silicone and get a cool result as well. I haven't done this color combination in a while, so I'm kind of interested to see how it comes out. I always love these color combinations. There's a great color palette, along with a bunch of specialties in the Folk Art Drizzle line, so you can really kind of mix and match. These are all the original formula, but we're going to be showing you some of the neons and some of the metallics today, so stick around for that, because those are really beautiful colors. The options are endless in yeah. color combos and specialty combos. You really never run out of options. Yeah. And hopefully if you guys are into Folk Art Drizzle, we'll get some more colors out there. We would love to expand the line. Okay. So I filled my cup and I'm going to move these to the side because I may want to use them later. And I'm going to 
pour onto our canvas. Now there's a, several different ways that you can do a dirty pour. You can turn your canvas over, put your cup on top, and then flip the whole thing over. Um, that's a fun one. I'm just going to kind of pour in a pattern and you'll kind of see all that color start to merge and blend and it's gonna be really beautiful. So again, a lot of different ways to do this. So you can probably see some of those cells are already forming and I haven't even applied any heat. Okay, perfect. And now we're gonna swirl. I did forget my gloves. So folk art drizzle is non-toxic and water-based, but I usually use gloves when we're on a live here, uh, just so that I don't have to wash my hands in between projects. So quick note there. It does get messy. It does get messy, but it's really fun. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna spread this out. And what I like to do when I'm doing cells, I like to do an initial spread, and then um, I like to do my cells, make my cells appear, and then continue to swirl it. While we're waiting on that, would one of you guys get me some paper towels or something? I forgot some of those. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab my torch, and you're gonna see all these cells start to form, and I'm gonna hold this up, but this is coming out really, really good. And you just hold your torch about five or six inches off the top of your canvas. You can get a little bit closer. You just don't wanna actually sear the paint. You just wanna have enough heat that's concentrated to make those cells appear. And I can see on my monitor, you can't totally see it, but like I said, I'm going to hold this up so that you can, guys can see this really, really well. And you can see just how different all the sizing is. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this up as it is. So you can see all those cells start to form. And now what I like to do, since those cells are really small, I'm gonna to continue to spread my canvas so that those cells start to spread out and get really organic looking. And you kinda of just go with the flow. I know it's kinda of <laughs> cliche, but you just kind of want to work with the paint, see where everything's moving, see how everything's expanding. That's why I like to do this in two steps almost, because I like to make my cells bigger. Now I know there are a lot of different techniques to make bigger cells right off the bat. Um, I have not done any of those, so this is the way I have learned to separate those cells and get really large cells. I'm going to go back with my torch. I'm gonna add a few more. Now you'll notice like at some point there is kind of an end to your cell formation, but I've done this a lot. You can basically do this two to three times and then you get a lot of different sizes of cells. So the, the large ones have spread out because we were moving it, but then I go back with the torch and I get those tiny ones again. So there's a lot of different ways to do this and you can kind of just keep playing until you're happy with it. And it Sometimes the process seems a little magical, doesn't it? It's very magical. You turn your head and all of a sudden there's more little baby cells. <laughs> yeah, you don't necessarily, let, sometimes folk art drizzles in control and I'm okay <laughs> with that because it comes out cool. Well, you've got lots of good cells on there. I know, this one's a great one. I'm glad, I'm like, all right, we, sh we showed the people <laughs> yeah. what they wanted today. Okay, so that is our finished canvas. I'm gonna let that dry and folk art drizzle dries, uh, depending on where you are in the country, uh, or the world, it takes about a week to fully cure. Uh, if you've got a really low humidity environment, I'm sure that will be a lot quicker, but you just, you know, you've put a lot of work into this and you've made a beautiful piece of art, so you definitely wanna wait for this to cure. Don't uh, test your luck, don't come back to it and stick your finger right in the middle of it. You definitely wanna wait till this is completely dry, and it's gonna be hard to tell that it's dry because you can see as I'm tilting in the camera, this dries down to a super high gloss finish and it levels out. So you can see all that modeling right now. That's because we've got all that cell um, formation in there. But as soon as I let this sit down, I'm actually gonna tap it a little bit. It levels out beautifully and it looks like a glass-like finish. So that's one of the great things about Folk Art Drizzle. You can just literally let this cure and hang it on your wall. You don't have to apply a sealer or a finish. Um, it already has that beautiful gloss finish. So I'm gonna set this one aside.
and we're going to talk about our next canvas. So while you're prepping that, we yeah. do have an interesting comment from Penny, who okay. says, Hi from Chicago. My daughter and I did paint pours for her wedding takeaways, tile coasters, economical craft with a big impact. My friends still have them and use them. Love that. That's a really fun way to, to use drizzle. That's a great idea. Okay. Um, uh, Patricia does have a, a question. She yeah. says, does the heat from the torch cause the paint to dry prematurely? No. So that's the thing. You want to make sure that your paint and your torch are not getting too close. You want to make sure that your torch is, now that we're front on, you can see I've got about four or five inches of space. If you're right up on that canvas, yeah, you're going to burn the paint and it's probably going to dry it, but it's probably going to also kind of mess it up. So you want to make sure that you're not uh, applying too much heat. It's just, um, if you've ever worked in resin crafts, that heat is basically attracting those bubbles out of your paint and kind of like rising them to the top and then they burst. So you don't want to get super, super into that paint. You just want enough heat in the right area to get your bubbles to pop. And it's really, it sounds kind of intimidating and hard, but your first pour, you'll get a feel for it. It's really straightforward, so it's not hard at all. Okay. You, you can see the bubbles pop as you do it yes. as well, so you know that you're close enough. Correct. Okay, so for this next one, we're going to go for this look here, for this metallic. We're going to add some black into it. And I'm going to show you, we have a lot of great paint sets, and this is one of them. So we have a lot of different colorway sets. I think we have four or five uh, in the line. And this is our metallic set. So you get our Gold Rush, New Penny, and a Silver Bank. So these are great little um, four and a half ounce bottles. If you want to just try out the Folk Art Drizzle line, obviously they go well together because they're three metallic colors. So you can just start pouring with these if you're intimidated by picking a lot of different colors separately. So these are great for the beginner. So I'm going to be using colors out of that kit along with my black. And we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to mix our paint with our silicone. So again, we're just going to pour this out. So someone on YouTube uh, has a little tip. Stringed Assassin says, keep your torch moving as well, which Definitely. is a good point. Don't, don't, don't hover one over place. one spot. Because you, again, when you try it, you'll, you'll see right off the bat, it happens instantaneously. Yeah. So, and you'll know if you didn't put enough silicone in, it probably won't happen very quickly. So you'll know that you kind of messed up your ratio. But it's really pretty simple and straightforward. I have luck with it just about every time I do it. I've never had any issues with my torch. You can get refilled butane. Um, at Publix and Kroger and all the grocery stores, or you can also get it at your local craft store. So there's a lot of different uh, stores out there that carry this stuff that you wouldn't necessarily think of. Again, just a few drops each. You saw how great our cells came out in that first one, and I'm not going to try and reinvent the wheel here. And again, I'm just wearing gloves so that my hands don't get messy, but you can definitely do this, and Tanisha and I both do it, uh, pour a lot without gloves on, and it washes off really, really quickly and easily with soap and water. That goes for our tools as well. A lot of the tools are really durable uh, plastic, and you can just wash those in warm, soapy water when you're done. And they do clean up easily. Yeah. We have a lot of interesting tools in the line. If you've not seen uh, any of our other po um, other live streams, I was about to say podcasts, that'd be fun. Let's do a Drizzle podcast. <laughs> uh, and we have a lot of different tools. So if you are new to paint pouring in general, we have tools that kind of help you do the work. And you're not just set out on your own with a bottle of paint and a few cups. We have a lot of different technique tools that kind of give you a baked in design. So there, there's a lot to explore. We have volcanoes. We have slotted cups that have different chambers in them. Let me show you a few as we're talking here. One of my favorites is our three-slotted cup. It's a little cup with three different chambers. We've got, these are our volcanoes that you pour your paint on top of, and it kind of oozes over the side. So there's just a lot of different things in the Folk Art Drizzle line. So you know, generally, we recommend grab yourself a paint set 
so that you have your colors chosen for you, either four or three colors, and then you can grab a tool and a canvas and you can get painting. It's a great weekend project. It's very satisfying. Uh, it's not great for patient people like me because <laughs> it takes a long time for the paint to cure. But again, that's a big part of it. You, you definitely, it's worth it. You know, when you're dumping a bunch of paint on a canvas, you kind of can't get around that. You're going to have to wait for all that paint to dry. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure we've thought about this one too much. Okay. Um, again, from Penny, she says, if I wanted to create a triptych, how would you suggest doing this yeah. across three canvases? So that's a cool idea. Um, for those of you who are watching who may not know what a triptych is in the art world, that just means three pieces that go together. So I think a lot of times in fluid art and resin art, you'll see three different canvases that someone lays out on a table and they pour across all of them and then they end up getting a design that goes across all three and then you kind of separate them on your wall and they look like a continuous design. So the way I would do that is lay yourself a tarp on the ground, depending on how big your canvases are. If they're small, you could do it on table. But I would lay out a big tarp, get your canvases, get your push pins in there so that they're up off of the tarp. And I would bump them up almost like right, probably maybe like a half an inch up to each other because you really don't want this stuff to touch because if it touches, you won't get pretty edges. So I would say you would want to make sure that you have a little gap in between and then just have three canvases sitting there and then just pour across them. And um, as far as, you know, like resin art, I think is what you're probably thinking of. And those resin, you don't move as much. So there's not as much like tilting and shifting. So you would still need to like spread your paint out, in which case I guess you could attach your canvases down to a board or something so that they're all moving in the same way. But I'm sure you'd get a cool result no matter how you do it. But doing a triptych would be really neat. I think I did, um, when we launched Folk Art Drizzle, I did a few different triangle canvases. And when you buy triangle canvases, they come in a four pack so that they're a square and then you can kind of like pull them apart and they're individual triangles. And I poured like that and they came out really cool. Okay, almost got all my paint stirred. Now, I think I'm going to do a bit more of a clean pour where I directly place the paint onto my canvas. Um, so we're going to try that. I'm just going to put ribbons of paint on the canvas, and then we'll swirl it, and then we will activate our cells with our torch. And the great thing about a clean pour is you can kind of control how much of each color you're getting on there. So I want this one to be kind of gold heavy, so I'm gonna put a few more stripes of gold. And the cells you get from the paint interacting with each other, and so I'm gonna kind of pour it so that my paint is a little bit overlapping, so that there is some of that cell interaction. You can already start to see in the silver, there's cells forming in that. Working with the metallics is really fun because it's like molten metal. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's really fun. It's kind of, you know, it, it appears at first sight that, at first glance rather, that folk art drizzle is really bright and loud and there's only you know, bright colors. So if you're more of a home decor artist, you may, might initially think that it's not for you, but the reality is we have a lot of colors in the line that are more muted and home decor colors. And you can also blend your colors before you pour them on your canvas. It's really fun. Tanisha and I have both done blended colors uh, for projects and they are really fun to mix your own colors from Folk Art Drizzle. Yeah, you can work with it just like you would work with a, uh, you know, any other paint out there. You can blend your own color using color theory or just guessing. Yeah, really fun. Okay, so I'm going to swirl this around a little bit. I have a feeling this one's going to be pretty cool. So again, we want that paint to kind of marry and mix, and you can already see the silver is really separating well over the copper, 
And I'm hoping for more of that as soon as we get our torch out. That's going to be really cool. Just clean off my hands really quick. And then we're going to grab our torch. Yeah. See, it's super cool, you guys. I've worked at Plaid for a long time and we make some amazing products, but Folk Art Drizzle is one of my absolute favorite products that we've ever come out with. It's just so wow, like it gives you so much impact and it's so versatile. Pouring is really one of those kind of uh, projects that gives you a big wow with minimal effort right. in a small amount of time. You yeah. go from a blank canvas to something that kind of knocks your socks off so quickly. Because a lot of times in creative processes, you know, you're kind of reliant on your skills. You right. Know? So you need to know how to paint a flower or you need to know how to design a vignette. But the reality with pouring is, of course, there's a lot of amazing fluid artists out there on TikTok and YouTube and Facebook. But the great thing about Folk Art Drizzle is that you can kind of just be an artist. <laughs> you can just pour some paint on the canvas, move it around, and you're gonna get a cool result. Very beginner friendly. Yeah. So that is our metallic canvas. Again, I surprised myself. That's really mm -hmm. cool. I'm really <laughs> happy with that. Um, so you can see those cells are huge. They're really impactful. And as soon as this dries down, let me show you the dry um, version again. You're gonna see that metallic really come to life. So you can see you've got that beautiful glossy sheen and those metallics are shining like molten metal. It's an awesome, awesome formula in the Folk Art Drizzle line. I'm gonna set this one aside again. Okay, so now we're going to do one of our other techniques that I showed you at the beginning, which is a swipe method. And what we're gonna do is mix our colors the exact same way we've been doing it and pour them lengthwise onto the canvas and then we're going to drag over them and you're going to see all those cells start to appear and as soon as we start um, using our torch you're going to see them go crazy on there. And this is a technique that's been popular on TikTok lately. Yes. I've seen this a lot. I see this one a lot <laughs> and people are always into this one because it's kind of a wow right off the bat. Okay, we're going to do this one the same way we did the last few here. And again, we're going to do a straight pour, so I'm just going to mix my colors um, and then we're just going to pour them on the canvas. So we're not going to be doing a dirty pour in one cup. And I'm going to use a few of our neons. So we've got our um, Neon Limeade and Neon Pop here from our neon kit. You can get these in the large size as well. But I'm going to use these little four and a half ounce bottles. So I don't need a ton for this project. One thing we haven't shown in these projects, but I just want to mention is that we also have glitters, um, which like our other folk art glitter paints, it's really nice because uh, you're not using loose glitter, but you're still getting the effect of glitter. Yeah, so we have three different colors of glitter. Um, we have a salt, salty, then we have a uh, cosmic sky, and then gold rush. So those are really pretty. Yeah, Emily's got a sample for me too. This is the gold glitter. Look at that. We've got a bunch of diffused light here in the studio, so you don't really see the shine of that glitter. But when you get a really direct light on it, when you go outside, this glitter is so sparkly and beautiful. And this is just the pitch black and the gold rush glitter. It's really beautiful. And the nice thing about that, too, is that it's not, it's not chunky in any way. It's right. not... Uh, totally smooth. It's totally smooth. It mixes the same as all the other drizzle paints. It's, it's literally like pouring with glitter. Yeah. And of course, you can you know uh, do that in combination with your metallics and or you know or with any of them. I mean, it's 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 just another option that's fun, especially for kids. Yeah. Kids love glitter. Right. And the glitters are a little bit different. They come out kind of milky, suspended in a milky base, and then they dry down completely clear. As you saw, all you see is that glitter. So it literally, it's not glitter in paint. It is liquid glitter. 
again, just mixing a drop of my silicone into my paint. I love these neons. Yeah, they're really fun to work with. Yeah. When the canvas that I was alluding to at the beginning that Tanisha and I did uh, at our first launch week of Drizzle, we did, I don't know, like four by five, four foot by five foot canvas. It was a big one. Um, and we just splattered Drizzle on it right out of the bottle. And you can see a little time lapse video again in our Instagram story highlights. That was really kind of fun. We were both like, what do we do? <laughs> and we just kind of threw it at the canvas and it came out cool. You can drip it. That's another thing to think about. You know, these folk art drizzle bottles have been designed with a technique in mind. So, you know, they have these great little flip top caps that you can use to pour directly onto your canvas. So if you're worried about waste, you don't have to use extra cups. So you can just use the paint out of the bottle and then reuse the bottle. As soon as you're done with your paint, you can store more paint in there. You can grab refills. There's a lot of different opportunities there. So for this technique, we are going to do our colors in bars, like I said, across the top of our canvas. And then we're gonna drag the paint across the canvas using our swiper tool out of the Drop Swipe Stir Tool Kit. You can see that's that really nice rigid plastic that we're gonna use. And the Drop Swipe Stir Tool Kit actually has several different tools and it's 13 pieces overall. You get four um, dropper tools, you get six tongue depressor wooden stir sticks that you can reuse time and time again. Then you get three different swipers. So you get a round tooth, um, a square tooth, and then you've got this guy who's kind of an all purpose. So you've got teeth at the bottom and then you also have a really nice flat edge. And we're gonna be using the flat edge. And it's great to have this. I've used a lot of different things as a swiper, and it's really great that we have one specifically designed for this because I've used cardboard and a lot of other things that are not this sturdy and they don't do the job as well. So you might think, oh, I could just use, you know, whatever I have lying around the house. This is really kind of a great tool um, and, you know, it definitely serves a purpose. Okay. So I'm gonna save my In the Tropics color here, this like aqua color and I'm going to pour these out. I got a little dust on here. And I'm gonna pour these, like I said, in lines across my canvas. And I'm not really concerned that it goes over the edge because there's gonna be plenty of paint to go around. But I'm just gonna do little strips. And I'm just gonna alternate until I reach the end of my canvas. And the cool thing about this technique is you're gonna see all of those different colors pop through when our cells start to form. And the great thing about folk art drizzle is that the colors blend really beautifully when you want them to, but they also stay really separate. So like when you do a dirty, uh, clean pour, your paint stays really nice and separated. You get really um, distinct bars of color. So it's really kind of nice and versatile. Just gonna make sure that goes to the end. And I'm gonna pick this up and kind of move it side to side so that we get that paint going over the entire canvas. And we got a good amount of paint there. And then we're gonna pour our last color on, which is this in the tropics. I'm gonna fill this whole area. Hopefully we get a cool spread. Okay, you can see all those colors are on the canvas. Kind of weird looking, kind of funky. So we're gonna take our um, swiper here and the point of this is to glide the swiper across and touch all the colors and kind of drag this aqua color over. You can go over it a second time. This takes practice, I will say. You wanna try and get it done in one, one swipe. So we're gonna see if I can do that. So you kind of let it do the work. I didn't do it all in one, so I'm gonna wipe it back off. This is this takes practice, I will say. You can see those cells wanting to come up. Okay. 
So there's a few popping out right now, but we're going to get our torch. And you're going to see all of them start to form. They're coming. kind of see them there in the light. I'm going to swirl my canvas around and kind of get some of that paint off. And we're going to start, yeah, okay. There we go. I can see them from here. Yeah, there they come. This is a cool one. I have a funny comment. Christine says, I'm so excited watching this, I'm tilting my phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're kind of moving with me. <laughs> So, you know, as you can see there, I had a little bit too much paint on top, and that was keeping me from seeing those cells. I could see them here in the studio. They were just like forming as little dimples, but they weren't coming out. So that told me that I had a little too much paint that I, in the tropics was a little too heavy. But, you know, this is, again, fluid art, so it's very fluid. So you can uh, move it around and keep working it. You don't have to stop the first time something doesn't go as planned. It's kind of nice. Okay, so you can see how cool that is. I'll hold that up a little bit. Let me clean off my hands. So look at all those cells. You see all of those cool colors coming through. And all we did was swipe some paint across the top. It's really, really neat. Okay, guys. Well, uh, if there are any remaining questions, go ahead and relay them to Tanisha. We'd love to answer them for you. Uh, and if you haven't already, go to plaidonline.com slash drizzle, and you can find our great getting started guide. If you're new to paint pouring or folk art drizzle in general, it is the brand new paint addition to the folk art paint line. So you want to make sure to go to plaidonline.com slash folk art drizzle. You can buy all the paints there. Um, rather, you can be linked to Michael's to go buy all the paints there. And we have that great guide. We have a lot of different project ideas and inspiration. So it's just an all around great place for you to get some inspiration. So uh, until next time, guys, we will see you later this